This week on KCBY, we explore the changes to Coppell safety policies. Understand how students will be affected by the lack of designated blended classes next year. And learn about the Catholic tradition of Lent. KCBY starts now. Last week, we had a report on how safety will be improved in our school. This week, we go more in-depth into the policy changes and hear more from COPPA leadership on how they plan to maintain the safety of CHS students. Rachel brings us the story. Tragedy. You never know when it's going to strike. In the case of Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, tragedy struck and left 17 dead. The incident has forced legislatures to revisit their policies on gun control and mental health. But now, here within the walls of CHS, our administration is working to ensure that the next tragedy doesn't occur here. One of the first things I did when I came to work here is evaluated where we were in terms of school security, where we needed to get better. I think we have room to grow, certainly, but already there are big steps that are being taken. Several policy changes have already taken effect. External doors will now be monitored, magnetic locks will be installed on all doors, and a vestibule which will require people to be buzzed in will be installed at the main entry. However, perhaps the most emphasized policy is that of see something, say something. There has to be a partnership between the adults and students involved, and ultimately we just have to care enough about each other to pay attention to those around us. Both our school resource officers and Coppell Police Department also work to ensure our safety. We talked to Chief of Police to understand their plan in case an active shooter incident occurs. So we're constantly updating, we're constantly trying to prepare. For example, a couple of years ago we went into Coppell High School during the summer and we ran through scenarios. So it's important for the patrol officers to know what the layouts are of the school. Here are some steps you can take to keep your learning environment safe. Report any and all suspicious behavior, monitor social media for troubling posts, and take threats of violence seriously. Four out of five perpetrators of violence told someone their plans beforehand. You could be the difference between a tragedy and a close call. For KCBY, I'm Rachel Barron. Continue the conversation on social media with the hashtag CHS Safety and share your ideas for improvements. Don't forget to tag at KCBY Coppell. Now we move on to an issue which will affect how we use the internet in the years to come. Net neutrality was a policy which required all internet providers to treat users equally, making it impossible to target websites and individuals to slow down their internet. The policy was repealed by the FCC in 2017. However, the Court of Appeals will now hear arguments to put net neutrality back in place. We talked to CHS students to get their opinion on the issue. I mean, it, the whole point of the internet was like, supposed to be free and be able, people to be able to interact and connect with each other. And that kind of takes away from it because many people won't use the internet as much because they're trying to save money to either like pay their bills. I think it will affect other people who use sites that are smaller. And uh, like, like they say, they're going to have to compensate, they're going to have to raise their prices. So it will affect the people who use those sites. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be a good thing or a bad thing. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, I am worried that some of the policies that are going to be implemented will affect not only uh, your everyday internet experience uh, with the sites you visit, but also perhaps um, there might also be political implications where certain stances by certain companies might lead to um, their internet speeds being throttled or having to pay more to access those or perhaps having them shut out for entire classes of people. I believe net neutrality is somewhat unfair to the smaller companies because um, it's going to um, require a lot more effort and money for the smaller companies to um, get to their customers and fulfill their orders because of um, extra premiums that they're going to have to pay due to government regulations. But um, I think in the grand scheme of things, it won't be that big of a deal. 
The chances of costs increasing and less accessibility to other websites is really high and so I'm not the hugest fan of that just because I feel like if we have the internet we should all be able to use it at its full capacity like we have been. Really interesting. We'll be back after these messages. KCBY is brought to you by TCBY. Stop by after school for happy hour specials. Only $2.49 for six ounces of your favorite Froyo. Have you ever wondered what is going on in your school and the surrounding community? Don't worry, CobbellStudentMedia.com has you covered. Every day you can find fresh stories, pictures, and videos from the sidekick and KCBY to keep you updated on all things Cobbell. Cobbell Student Media, where the news comes to you. Next, we clarify the lack of designated blended classes on next year's course guide. Hannah finds out more about the change. Over the past few weeks, confusion has arisen over the absence of blended courses and registration for next school year. The difference in the blended program we had planned for next year is that we want all of our courses that would like to incorporate blended strategies into their curriculum to be able to do so. So instead of having listed in the course guide actual blended classes to distinguish that, we are doing professional learning to teach lots of different teachers the op or how to teach to a blended environment so that they can utilize the lab, so that they can just utilize the, the learning spaces that we have within our building to be able to support that blended learning concept. However, not all students think this modification in their learning environment is a positive change. I don't like the new blended program because I feel like my course selection should be more of a choice for me. And the fact that I don't know what I'm going to be signing up for and leaving this up to the teachers kind of makes me nervous not knowing what learning style I'm going to pertain in. Although the blended program's revisions are still being discussed, change is on the way. For KCBY, I'm Charlotte Vanio. Congratulations to the 22 CHS students who were recognized at the Dallas Science and Engineering Fair on Saturday. You represent our school well. Also, another big congratulations to those who competed at VASE. CHS came home with 81 regional medals and 16 state medals. Now we go to Ashley Miznazi to find out what's trending this week. Here's the buzz for this week. We begin with some big news for music fans. Rapper Logic dropped two singles within five days, and then continued to surprise his fans even more by releasing a new music video for his song, Overnight. It is speculated that the song is a part of an album that should be his last, but Logic hasn't confirmed or denied this fact since last year, so we'll just have to wait and see. In other news, in response to the school shooting in Florida, Donald Trump tweeted that highly trained, gun adept teachers and coaches would solve the problem instantly before police arrived. Teachers responded and took to social media, saying things like, Hi, I'm a teacher. I don't want a gun. I can use some more dry erase markers. Thanks for your time. The conversation also continued in the form of memes that were posted and retweeted through people's feeds. Donald Trump responds to criticism, saying that he never said to give teachers guns. Lastly, you've heard about goats, and you've heard about yoga, but what about goat yoga? This is one of the latest trends in pop culture, and I kid you not, pun intended, some goat yoga facilities have waiting lists in the thousands. You can sign up to do goat yoga in Richardson and join in on the fun. That's it for the buzz this week. The religious tradition of Lent goes back centuries in the Catholic Church. And as it begins this year, so does the tradition of Fish Fridays at St. Anne's Catholic Parish. This year, the funds raised from the event will go back into the church. Maddie finds out how. In the Catholic faith, Lent is a religious observance in which many don't eat meat on Fridays. In support of this tradition, St. Anne's Catholic Parish holds a fish dinner for the community each Friday during Lent. Because it's a, a community, community event, you get to meet people that perhaps you didn't know before you came. And the food, I, I'm, I'm blown away. It's actually really good. Well, the, the fish fry is a great promoter of community here at St. Anne's. It's just a great way that our families can come together in support of our teams. This event is about more than just observing Lent. All proceeds go to supporting the annual youth mission trip to Laredo, Texas, in which students serve the poor surrounding community through help with construction needs and leading activities for younger children. Last year my experience was absolutely amazing. Um, I would say one of my like, favorite parts was during the summer I worked with 
the children at like Vacation Bible School in El Cenizo and it was absolutely wonderful because I got to like see Christ through the kids and just to like receive their love and also like give them my love. It was truly like life changing. Well, we, we are here every Friday during Lent um, from 6 to 7.30 in the assembly room here at St. Anne's and the community is welcome. You don't have to be a member of the parish to attend. We'd love to have any community support for our teens and the Mission Laredo product, project. For KCBY, I'm Maddie Holsey. Looks delicious. Now let's go to Amelia in the CSM newsroom. Thanks, Henry. Last week, the Sidekick published our March issue. The paper features stories such as a story about the Me Too movement's effect on the attitudes surrounding sexual assault and a story about sophomore Kate Strong's growth in dancing and figure skating and how the two activities supplement each other. The issue also features a two-page spread about the role dishonesty plays in college admissions processes. On Coppell Student Media, we have implemented a new category, the one-shot columns written by Anthony Cesario and Andres Baer, which will feature a song of the week, a technology blurb, and a creativity showcase. Be sure to check the site regularly for updates. Now back to Henry and Iris in the studio. Thanks, Amelia. Now to Ethan with CSPN. Hi, I'm Ethan Sway, and this is CSPN. This past Tuesday, your Coppell Cowboys faced the J.J. Pierce Mustangs at Buddy Eccles Field. Akash gives us some insight on how the game went for Coppell. This past Tuesday, the Coppell Cowboys soccer team played against the J.J. Pierce Mustangs. Throughout the game, the Cowboys played great defense, but unfortunately, it wasn't enough to stop the Mustangs. Nathan Jackson, player for J.J. Pierce, scored with 10 minutes left in the first half, putting the Mustangs on the board. Um... We played okay. I think we came out kind of slow, and uh, while we looked kind of good defensively, I think we really lacked uh, in the attack. We should have definitely had more chances, uh, more goals, and uh, yeah, I think I think where we can prove is just winning all the 50-50 balls, uh, not not playing so direct, and yeah. The Cowboys fought hard throughout the second half, but were unable to score, losing the game with a final score of one and zero. Don't forget to come out at 5.30 this evening to support the Cowboys as they face the Lake Highlands Wildcats home. That's for CSPN, now back to Iris Thanks, Ethan. Now to special features. Hi, I'm Christy. I'm 38 years young. Um, I've been told I have a really young soul. Did you know that Prima Malone was here? All my kids are actively involved in soccer, and I think it's such a bonding experience for all of us, especially since I've become assistant coach. No, that is a foul! That is a foul! Hi, I'm Karen. I have one son, and he's currently not enrolled at CHS. Hi, my name is Amethyst, but I go by Amy. In my free time, I really like to tend to my herb garden, and I have an Etsy shop where I sell vegan crochet headbands. Hi, my name's Susan. I'm currently the president of the PTO. Um, I have two kids. They're fabulous, and they're both committed to Ivy League schools. Okay, ladies. So today I have a really important announcement. I'm going to be running for a PTO president. I can't believe Susan would do this. She knows I was running for president of the PTO. I literally did pregnancy yoga with her. You know, I'm also running for PTO president, right? <laughs> I hope you. Yes, I know Amy's running, but I'm not worried. I don't know why everyone is so stressed over who's gonna be PTO president. Some of us have a real problems. My kid can't read. He's 18. I've been known to campaign hardcore and this is no exception. Okay, ladies, now before we leave, I got a full treat. I got cupcakes to really, you know, go for my campaign. Susan knows I'm gluten-free. I knew she was competitive, but I didn't think she would resort to poison. Are these what I think they are? Uh, what? Are these what I think they are? Cupcakes for my campaign. Oh my god! <laughs> you diva. <laughs> This is war. May the best mom win. Thanks for joining us, CHS. Have a safe and fun weekend.
my